Well, we all know how bad March was for the Winnipeg Jets. It was not a fun time. It looked like things were finally collapsing. The All of our worst fears as Jets fans were being realized. And a lot of people were panicking. You had a lot of talk about the words frauds being thrown in there. A lot of people on some certain podcasts talking about it. And all this stuff. And well, the month of April comes around. The final month of the NHL regular season. And the Winnipeg Jets have been an unstoppable force. They are finally getting back to their style of hockey, their effective hockey that we've seen, and they are picking it up at the most important time of the season. Playoffs are right around the corner, and like hell, the tickets will be on sale on Monday. And this team has finally put everything together and are on one of their best streaks, if not the best streak, you could say, of this season. A six-game win streak as of now after beating the Colorado Avalanche, who will be their first-round opponent this year, 7 to nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard me right. 7 to nothing against their first round matchup. I don't think this Jets team has ever had a performance like this going into the playoffs against a first round matchup. Like, that's just insane. And this is coming off of the back of their best and toughest win streak, I would say, of the season right now. A 7 nothing win today. A 3 nothing win for Lauren Brossois against Dallas a couple days ago. A 4-3 win in overtime over the Nashville Predators, a team that pit- spanked them a couple weeks prior. A 4-2 win over the Minnesota Wild, a team that they've been beefing with all year long. A 5 to win over the Calgary Flames where they finally saw the Jets clinching and then obviously this all gets started off with the 4-3 victory over the Los Angeles Kings and since that Kings game this Jets team has had and found its identity again now they haven't been playing perfect hockey they have had moments where the first line has struggled again with their 5-on-5 play they've had some inconsistencies in that regard but that theme has been overarching for this entire season this isn't something that's all of a sudden new it's just the Jets are getting back to winning games around these issues and having their 5-on-5 play, their power play, and whatnot be, you know, getting, being more effective, and that's all fine and dandy, but this team still is going to have to really hunker down going into the playoffs, and I believe that they are, and we're seeing it with this win streak. I was nervous going into today's game against the Avalanche, you know, I was not, not that I expected the Jets to lose, that's not what I'm saying when I was nervous, but because this is a tough matchup, and, you know, you look at the past, like, you know, like I said, you look at that Nashville game a few weeks ago, you know, that's a team that was on off the hottest streak they were on and all this, and the Jets were fighting for potentially first in the division and they just pissed it all away. And now they're really fighting, locking it down. And this, like I said, this could have not been a better game for you against the team you're going to be playing in the playoffs, in my opinion. Because not only was this just a dominant, this was not an off night for the uh, Avalanche. Like, obviously, you can say, oh, you know, they don't lose 7-0 every night, and I get that. But what I'm trying to say is that the Jets, if you watch this game like I did from start to finish, you know, and you see what other people are talking about, but there's on the analysts, the breakdowns, the Jets found a way to take advantage of the Avalanche's systems and make it their, 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 their kryptonite, pretty much. Like, they took advantage of every mistake. They forced the Avalanche to really give up the neutral zone and bad passes and really take advantage of that, and they ran with it. Seven goals, back-to-back shutouts for your starter and your backup. But, you know, what it really comes down to, in my opinion, is Rick Bonus, who it's been coming down to for the last, like, two months since the All-Star break, pretty much. And that is, can he really keep this team going and motivated and disciplined, more importantly? And, you know, the last couple of games, 100%, I think so. And... It just, uh, don't get in his head again, you know? The Jets found themselves in a spot where they were finding so much success, the lines were rolling, and then, you know, they started to t- tinker a little bit too much, and they just started to, you know, not adjust when lines weren't as effective. And that's really what, you know, put the Jets on that path of having a terrible march, and just not playing that, you know, not clinching the division. You know, the Dallas Stars clinched the division title today for the Central, and the Jets could have done that. But they pissed it away because of bad coaching, in my opinion, and a refusal to acknowledge mistakes within the lineup. And... You know, as of late, they've kind of dealt with these mistakes in a really effective way. Obviously, you put Ewers on that second line with Monaghan and Toffoli, and they've had a lot of chemistry. And I know there are a lot of people that do not like Kyle Connor on there with Mark Shifley, but when Kyle Connor is on that line with Shifley and Velarde, I don't mind as much, especially with Velarde getting to the net the way he did. Like, that goal that Velarde was able to score, I think it was the second goal of the game today. Um, like, that, he was right up against the post. Like, that is such a difficult goal to score, and what a pass from Kyle Connor as well. So if that's the type of chemistry you're going to be getting from that first line, 
and the second line's playing the way they are. Like, Sean Monaghan's been an absolute amazing fit. Same with Tyler Toffoli, who I believe has five or six goals now with the Winnipeg Jets since being traded uh, at the deadline from New Jersey to the Jets. And Monaghan as well. I think Monaghan's going to be re-signed by this team. I think he's fit in perfectly. Hell, I think that if you even want, if you really want to, you go out there and you try to sign Toffoli as, as well, and you kind of keep this kind of together because the way this team has been playing the last, you know, six games, going into the playoffs, and even, you know, before that, like, they finally figured it out at the best time. And it's just so rewarding as a fan to watch them play this way because it's been nervous for all. I, I was nervous. I know a lot of people have been nervous, you know? Hell, when you look at the way the fandom had been reacting, and I know Jets fans are volatile. I include myself into that mix of, you know, very reactive um, uh, on how the game is, win or lose, you know, oh, the season's over or we're back and all that crap. I get it. I know I contributed to that being part of that. But every fandom has those, you know, that element to it. And I think that what we're seeing right now from this Jets team is really you know a turnaround and they're digging in deep for the playoffs like yes they struggled a couple of months ago you know it's not even the last couple of months have been rough let's not be real they have not been as consistent as they were prior to the all-star break we know that that's a fact the record says so but at the same time right now these last six games outside of that national game i would say and even then they won it so who cares like they're playing really good hockey. They're digging in deep. They're getting efforts from Cole Perfetti, who's finally getting catching on again, which is huge for them right now. You know, because he's been slow for so long. And if he can really get going for the playoffs, that's great. You know, Logan Stanley as well, who we're going to have a short on tomorrow, who I'll just talk about a bit more in that short tomorrow, but... You know, he's been playing some of the best hockey of his career, in my opinion, as of late. You know, the points aren't coming, but it doesn't matter because he's not as defensively terrible as we've seen him in, you know, years prior. And that's huge for this club to actually have a depth defenseman in Stanley with size that fights now, that gets the crowd going, that plays the way he has been. I think that's very, very huge for them. And it's not the key reason why they're winning, but depth is key in the playoffs. And if Logan Stanley be can become good depth for you, a fighter, you know, that gritty presence that a lot of us have always wanted him to have, that he just hasn't embodied because of his size then I think you find yourselves in a great situation, you know, and this defense has been playing great lately. They've been playing a lot better, jumping in the offense more, you know, outside of Neil Pionk, I, I, I think this team is really locking in and we're getting their best performances we've seen in a very long time. And I, for one, just couldn't be happier that the six game win streak has come at the time that it has, you know, we've only got a couple of games left that game against the Vancouver Canucks on the 18th, I believe. So Thursday will be the final game of the 2023, 24 season. I'll be in Winnipeg on the 21st. That is when my flight is booked. I cannot wait. Playoffs are right around the corner. We're like a week away from the most exciting time in sports. It is awesome time to be a Jets fan right now because this team is playing their best hockey as of late. I'm so happy that they are performing the way they are. You know, the lines are finally starting to find some balance and some real chemistry, in my opinion. You can differ, and if you do differ, let me know down in the comment section below. But, you know, I've been so worried about coaching staff for a while, and it really feels like these lines are finally starting to settle. And yeah, there are still some problems in their game, but the, this Jets team is smart. They play the game smart, and when they are on, they are on fire. And right now, they are definitely on fire. So I can, couldn't be happier. So glad that they are on this run, enjoying it. I bet you all of you Jets fans are out there enjoying it too. And let's keep it going. I want to, you know, I'm going to say it. Let's ride this win streak out, baby, until the end of the year. Wouldn't that be something? So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts about this. What do you guys think about the playoff matchup against the Colorado Avalanche and the rest of the way that things are shaping up in the West? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and predictions on the playoffs. Also, if you made it this far, let me know what type of content you'd like to see in the next coming up weeks as the season wraps up. I don't really have that many ideas cooking on the burner right now, but I can and I will sooner than later. So thank you guys for sticking with this channel this year. It's been a hell of a run, just like this team is on a hell of a run this year. So thank you very much for all the support, peace, and positivity. As always, go Jets go, and I'll see you guys in the next one.